Bonjour, bonsoir. How are you, dear friends? We are building the most inspiring and phenomenal communities of wine lovers. As we all know, wine is the catalyst of the greatest discussion. We'll be talking wine, but of course food, and everything that touches all our nation and senses. Bonjour, bonsoir, dear friends. Welcome to JCB Live. This is a happy hour with Leslie's Bracco, one of the most amazing, legendary lady in the world of wine. Born in America, she really represents everything that is a dream as a young, talented woman. First, she's the mother of two marvelous children, and she has achieved it all in the wine world. Author of two incredible books, we'll ask her about it, TV host, Wine Today TV show, CNN, CBS, NBC's, well, everything. She's a great James Beard Award winner, three Taste Awards, and three Emmy Awards. Won't we lucky today? She's obviously on PBS show, of which she was on and consulted, named Cougar Town. So we will ask her a few questions about that. Very intriguing. And she's the founder at the same time of all of this, of a great company named The Thirsty Girl. She's gorgeous, charismatic, talented, electric, magnetic. So this is why I need to open a very special glass of bubble. I will open Passion, she will open 21 because she loves Burgundy and in honor of her, I'm gonna open a Carneros Sparkling. So Leslie, please come in. Bonjour, Leslie. Ça va bien. Thank you, Leslie, first of all, for being so gorgeous. As oh, always. well, you know, it's all the lighting. It's always lighting. <laughs> so irresistible. So charming to be with us today. And you have behind you the map of Burgundy. I do. This is just for you. I actually brought this back from Burgundy many, many years ago. I think probably on a visit that I met you and have had it framed in above my desk in my office uh, since that time. So I get to take a, a little trip to Burgundy every time I look at it. Well, I'm very touched. So let's have a toast. All because right. I, well, know... I, I brought out my big glass. <gasps> Fabulous. Where did you get this? I'm sure you had it made for you. This is my big glass. It, it fits a whole bottle of bubbles. So I'm just going to top it up. I don't want to it because I want to drink them, but I had to pull out my big glass just for you. Well, I'm honored and touched and so excited for us and all our friends to meet you. Everyone already knows you, but to uh -oh. be with us for a few minutes to talk about you. So, All right, santé. Santé. À votre santé. À ta santé et à ta beauté. Mm. To your beauty, as always. And I need to say <laughs> to all our friends, in Burgundy, I need to confess, Leslie was eight years old. It was 20 years ago. <laughs> we clever. met in Burgundy. We mm. had a tour of our 17th century cellar. We and did. dear friends, I need to tell you, Leslie was on a visit to Burgundy. We became friends instantaneously. And she was so good in tasting that I did a blind tasting out of 12 wines. She guessed nine of them. <laughs> that, do you remember, Leslie, how I incredible do remember it that. was? I do remember that, of course, of course. One of my most memorable moments together among many. So, Leslie, it's all about you tonight. So tell us about what are you working on these days? Because I know you have so much going on. What is the latest thing you've created? Well, you know, we're all um, adapting and transforming ourselves as we can to deal with the current situation. Um, actually, you know what? Uh, I'm going to put down my big glass and I'm going to get my real glass back ah, here. Ah. Of... This, the big glass <laughs> is for later, I know. 
of 21 right back there because this is what I want to drink out of this beautiful glass, this beautiful stem. So that I can, now I can sip elegantly, right? Instead of holding that. But I like the big glass. This is Well, don't worry, cool. we'll bring it back. She'll make another appearance, don't you worry. Um, <laughs> but so right now I'm um, transitioning some of the things that I've been working on uh, to a virtual, obviously to a virtual state like we all are. But prior to COVID and to things happening, you know, um, when the world when the world stopped in in March, um, I had just launched my television show, a national PBS show, which you alluded to at the beginning, yes. called 100 Days Drinks, Dishes, and Destinations," of which you were a guest on one of my latest episodes. Thank you. Merci. I was very honored to. To discover fragrance with you and to see you at Senses making your own perfume. It was beautiful. We had such a fun day. So this show was conceived because over the years of being a wine expert, you know, spirits, food, traveling the world, yes. I would share my experiences and people would always say, oh, I want to go with you. I want to, can I come with you? Can I come with you? And so I thought this is the show that I want to do to really just bring a small camera crew, my producer with me, and turn on the land in a place where there are four days, turn on the camera and go. It. And that's what these shows are. We obviously do pre-production and plan what we'll be doing, but we leave lots of room for magic in these shows. And they're very personal. And I really want to take people along with me to discover things. So, uh, you know, we're not a big production that goes out and pre-plans everything. No, this is really, you, you were there. This is what happens in the moment is what we want to capture. And so- and that is being broadcasted over 300 stations around the United States, right? It is. We are, we are on national PBS uh, in a multitude of, of markets across the country, as you said, close to 300 stations nationwide. So check your PBS stations. Um, and what, I'm sure we'll have the website up that people can check. We have a station finder on there. And, um, and you, you know, it's, it's, I say it's a look at travels past and hopefully travels very near future because <laughs> These were all shot last year and into early part of this year and edited and turned into PBS um, by early March. So it really does capture a moment in time prior to the pandemic of, of traveling around the world and finding such joy. I'm hugging people and kissing people. <laughs> you know? I was fortunate we, we got the pleasure to hug. I it's know. It's very hard to see you just on the screen and not being able to be holding hands as we always do. I know, I know. So Leslie, if you could take us on a journey right now that is one of your most favorite journey, where would that be? Oh, well, I'll tell you, I did, uh, I, I've had so many shows that, that the episodes that I've just absolutely adored filming and including Nashville, Tennessee. I have two dear friends that are in the music industry as insiders in the industry and got to go down there and um, listen to music and, and go to distilleries and find some really fun. I actually did axe throwing. Um, it is just what it says. You know, you hold axes in your hand and swing them over your head and try to hit a target. Um, I finally got it. So we did axe throwing and I got to hang out with my, with my dear friend, Kathy Lee Gifford, who is now living part-time in Nashville. So there's, you know, it's hard for me to just answer one. So I'm gonna, I'm, you know, I'm going to give you a few answers. Yeah, so. give us a few. We want to travel. <laughs> so Nashville was an episode that I wish, you know, I, 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 if people haven't been to Nashville, it should be on their list because it is just, it is, um, you know, they call it a, a drink in town with a music problem, and that's really what it is. It's fun. <laughs> um, and then went to Asheville, North Carolina. To oh. Film. And we filmed at the Biltmore Hotel, which is just regal American history. It's like yep. going to an American Downton Abbey. It's so fantastic. And, and the breweries around uh, Asheville and the food and the barbecue. So those were two kind of domestic trips that I think are 
are absolutely wonderful. I'm in. Whenever you organize it, I'm coming with you. Yeah, you're going to come with on the next one because you would have loved the Biltmore. We learned all this fantastic history of, of you know, the family and everything is farm to table, originally farm to table. And, and yeah. it's, uh, it's quite something. And they make actually sparkling wine in North Carolina, believe mm. it or not. It's delicious. Um, they grow Chardonnay. Yeah, a Blanc de Blanc um, from Chardonnay that they grow on the estate at the Biltmore. Um, and then I'm going to tell you two little, if I could bring people with me on experiences overseas or ah. out of the country, let's say, because that might be a little bit more distant, right? But they're episodes you can watch. And um, one of them is to Normandy, France. Oh, so of course. My sister lives in Normandy and has for 30 years. And um, she has a beautiful, wonderful home. And she and her, her husband's Norman. And so we got to make camembert and visit uh, the Benedictine Palace oh. in Fécamp and, um, and learn Calvados and, and go to Enfleur and, and you know, go doing a Calvados tasting and, um, and the cliffs at Atreta. And just, it's a, it's, and believe it or not, uh, Jean Charles, we had gorgeous weather for four days mm -hmm. straight in Normandy. <laughs> well, and Leslie, on this note, next year, in May, we are doing a cruise from Paris ah. to Normandy on the Seine River, the famous yes, Seine River. Goes right through it, through Rouen, yeah. That's it. So we're going to go exactly where your sister is. So if you're not visiting your sister, maybe you should at that time so we could pop in. We'll be a hundred of us. You would love her. Yes, I will. I will make the introduction and you can you can uh, bring the wine and she'll do the cooking. <laughs> oh, for sure I'll bring the wine. <laughs> or oh, we, we'll get some cider along the way. And you get cider. I actually did a cider tasting and we went and tasted, um, uh, you know, cider apples that had just come off the tree and learned all about the blending of cider. And it was just, it was fantastic. So that show is just a, a joy. And I'm so happy to hear that you're going. You'll love viewing that show. Yeah, um, so we're doing, we're doing a one-week cruise mm -hmm. in... Uh, to Normandy and back to Paris. And then we're doing a very extravagant, flamboyant Paris to Burgundy trip. Two days in Paris, three in Burgundy, three star Michelin at every step. Why am I not coming? Put me yeah, on the list. Why yeah, I'm telling you now, you're welcome. <laughs> it would make it much better and much more uh, fun. Can we, can we sing the Bon Bourguignon? <laughs> <laughs> Together we will, and we need to save time today to do uh, it. To do that as well, because you taught me that. <laughs> well, so Leslie, many people know you are today with us, and many ladies specifically. Ask me to ask you the following question. You know Leslie's Bracco, she's going to be on the show. I admire her. I find she's the coolest babe in the business, mm -hmm. the most inspiring lady. How did she achieve all that she did? in such a short period of time. So in other words, how do we become Leslie's Bracco? Well, I, I'm not sure you'd want that, but uh, <laughs> in a short period of time, let's talk decades. Um, so, you know, because again, I've known you for close to 20 years, I'm sure. Um, you know, I, I went to, I came out of college and I thought 100%, I grew up in the Midwest. I went to college in Boston and, and um, a private university in St. Louis. and. Um, and I thought 100% that I was going to be an attorney and, um, and get into and you would have been an amazing one, of course. But, uh, and get into politics and maybe be a senator. And let me just tell you right now, I'm very glad I didn't do either of those things. Um, and I got into wine instead. I would have given you my vote right now. <laughs> no, I, there's too much stuff that could be dredged up. I don't think I'd be going into politics anymore. <laughs> I would make a good politician, but I would not. <laughs> they'd, have a field day. they'd have a field day with me. Um, but, you know, I, I, it was a matter for me of finding my passion really along the way. Yes. You know, it's something that you're very familiar with and you're very, um, uh, you know, excellent at executing that as well, which is to say, I, I love something. Now, how can I bring that to life? And so for me, I, I realized pretty early on out of college that I did not want to be an attorney at that point. Yeah. And um, I got into doing some television work and things that I was very comfortable on camera and you know doing all sorts of, um, of 
kind of writing and television things. And I started falling in love with wine. So it really was oh. just that that I was living in San Francisco and I, you know, I was going to wineries and tasting and working harvest just to, you know, learn. And then at some point, I don't ask me to talk about years, but at some point I, I got to say, what do I know how to do? Which was yes. writing, communicating, speaking, and what do I love? And that, that was wine. And so I figured out how that intersection, yes. you know, try to make that intersection work. And that's what I recommend to people always is to say, you know, to live your life of passion and figure it out. You yes. have to say to yourself, because it's different for everyone. You have to say to yourself, what do I love? What yeah. do I know how to do? And how can I make those two things work? And mm -hmm. for me, it was not something that, you know, I just made it up. <laughs> I mean, I, there was no, <laughs> there was nobody doing what I wanted to do. You know? Well, you have as well a true talent as a wine taster, of course. You've been, besides the James Bean Award you've gotten, and obviously all the judge uh, you are part of on mm -hmm. world competition, writing about wine, you have a true taste talent. Obviously, what I was explaining a few minutes ago of you discovering nine wines out of 12 blew me away because it was a very difficult tasting I was doing. And you know, we were having a lot of fun, but right. you had no clue when you discovered those wines. And it was 20 years ago. So explain how you got to discover this fashion, but as well refine it to know that you had a talent and you perfected it. Well, I, I asked myself questions. So I said, you know, yeah. after having visited wineries and tasting and, and, and sort of helping, as I said, with harvest and, and, you know, getting my hands dirty, I thought, okay, is the production side really for me? Yeah. Uh, probably not. You know, um, you have a, an amazing, you know, Gina, an amazing uh, winemaker uh, in Gina Gallo, your beautiful, wonderful wife. And, you know, that is such her passion. I mean, she is such a talented winemaker. And, and you know, you really have to have that, um, that I think innate desire to want to do that, that piece of making the wine. For me, it was more about appreciating the wine and, and using my talents to describe, to communicate. I call myself a translator. So yeah. it's, I, I make it my um, job to understand the technical piece of things. I took winemaking courses, make a little wine at home, do uh, you know, a tremendous amount of wine judging and, um, and tasting. And so for me, it's really, you know, figuring out, okay, I've got the technical piece of it. Now, how do I translate that to make sense and to resonate with people? Because there is no dumbing down of wine. This is something that drives me crazy. People say- So what do you think, as we taste some wine, by the way, because right, I'm, I'm, I'm still not drinking enough is the problem. Not drinking enough. We need to stay hydrated. This is awesome. We do, we do, liquids, liquids. Why don't you give us three words, by the way, to describe number 21? Because I wanted to make sure we started today with the way we had an amazing time two decades ago tasting Burgundy. So, you know, the wine you're having 21 is a blend of Chardonnay Pinot Noir from Burgundy, Côte de Nuit, Côte de Bonne areas. So this is really where the map is. Right here, Côte de Nuit, Côte de Bonne. <laughs> Côte de Nuit, Côte de Bonne. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, this has such depth and complexity, but it's also, sorry, it's going to be more than three words. Um, no, I'll, I'll narrow it down to three words, but there's this depth, there's this complexity, but also this appealing um, succulence to it. So yes. it makes you want to drink more and more. And then you take a smell and you think, hmm, it's a little hint of floral. There's that, you know, ripe, uh, wonderful, kind of Fuji sweet apple to it. Not a green Ooh. tart apple, but a little Fuji sweet apple and, and a beautiful little red berry character to it. And then I taste it and it just coats your palate. It's like, it's like drinking bubbly silk, <laughs> right? I'm gonna borrow those words or for satin, you. Or satin, since I'm talking to you. Um, <laughs> but to me, this has, and then you take another sip and you discover something else. So silkiness, complexity, and aromatics. It has it all. And you know, thank you so much for all that. And you know, I'm tasting with you another one in your honor because this one represents everything that you are. Charismatic, <laughs> incorrigible, tumultuous. 
That's me. Beautiful. I'm a Scorpio. Vibrant, no. vibrant radiant. <laughs> and this is a Carnet Rose wine. So this is the American version of uh, naturally the JCB 20 wine. So I wanted to make sure we had two different wines in your honor as Mrs. America of wine. <laughs> so Leslie, I'd like um, you to explain, uh, obviously the great books you've uh, written on wine. One of them is, is they both phenomenal. And if you would show us the, the different covers. I, know, I, I just so happen to have them right here. That's right, I see them prepared, behind you. Prepared. Um, my first book coming out of the gate was a, a book called Wine for Women. Yes. And there's, uh, and don't worry, it's not gender exclusive. Men can, can read the book and enjoy it I as read well. It. <laughs> you read it. And it won the George DeBuff Best Wine Book of the Year Award when it came out um, uh, many years ago. But it, it was, you know, what made me write a book with that title yes. was, um, was the fact that for me, I, I found myself communicating a little differently to maybe men and women. Again, I go back to, I said I was, I consider myself a translator. How do I describe wine to make the light bulb go on for people, to make them right. find that passion for themselves, to make them say, oh, I just spent an hour with Leslie. I had so much fun. I tasted delicious wines and I learned two or three things. And that's what you want, right? You want that's them right. to, to feel like they've learned something. And, and that's why I hate that term dumbing down of wine because there is no dumbing down of wine. Wine is something to learn about, to experience, to enjoy, to continually learn about. I agree. Right? So, so you, you have to start from square one because, and it doesn't matter if you can change a carburetor on a, on a car, you know, you still have to buy a car. So, so, yeah. you know, you, you don't have to know everything. You just have to know what you like. And so when I um, came up with the concept of, of writing a book called Wine for Women, I was working for the New York Times company at the time. I had started their internet site about wine um, yeah. called Wine Today. Which was amazing. And it was a, a fantastic site, I have to admit. Yeah. Um, and many years ago, it was ahead of its time. For and sure. um, and so, I, I again, I, I sort of found that that as I got out and spoke to people and talked, I just found that women asked me different questions, right? And yes. we know the buying power of, of females. We know that they run everything. Come on. For sure. <laughs> Let's face it. Well, you know, besides Gina, I have two little twins. You have twin girls, gorgeous twin girls. Yeah, yeah we have two addresses at the house. I have the guest house for me when they kick me out. <laughs> That's Not to mention sometimes with them in the house. I grew up in a family of four sisters and my mother. My fa father passed away and I had one brother. But, you know, it's, it's uh, female power. So we love it, though. We know it. So I knew that, you know, and the studies had, had backed it up and still back yes. it up that women are the majority of wine consumers. And so, um, you know, I just, I, I, I focused on what I call building the essential wine wardrobe, which, and, and Merlot actually gave me the impetus to do that because I described... Merlot as the cashmere of the wine world, right? Oh, just, yes. Just a really great Merlot, right? A Pomerol, a saint Emilion, a really beautiful California Merlot. You, it's like cashmere that you drape around your shoulders and encompass yourself. And that's the feeling of a great Merlot, right? Very true. I can tell you about the tannins. I can tell you about the pH and the, you know, and, and, and all of that. I remember the cashmere in our shoulders. It doesn't matter. It's the feeling. And yeah. so, so Chardonnay became my ba basic black of the wine world because you always buy more black and it can be made in many styles from a, a fancy sparkly black dress to, to a suit to a pair for you today. And that's Chardonnay. It can be made in so many different styles, right? And, yes. and, um, and Riesling is the spring dress of the, of the wine world, right? And, well, and, so. um, and Zinfandel is the, is the, you know, the hot leather pants. Ooh, I like that. A little Maybe wild, a little. Laces on the back. A little raucous, right? You hop on the Harley and you drink your Zinfandel, which I know we're going to drink as Zinfandel as well. So, yes. um, but so that I, it, you know, I really wanted to structure the book in a way that would resonate with my audience. I called it buying, pairing, and sharing, talking yes. about the lifestyle aspect of it, and um, and giving you know things, answering the questions that I was asked, but with a, a tremendous depth of of information. So I always say that, that I, you know, I sneak in all that info. I, yeah. I smile and, and, you know, we have a great time 
And lo and behold, I've, I've snuck in all that information and you walk away much smarter. <laughs> well, and Leslie, so something very important. Two questions in one. Mm -hmm. Men, women ask different questions. What style of different questions would they ask and at which level? Mm -hmm. And two, are women tasting wine better yes. than men, right? Well, that, I can, that I can answer unequivocally. Yes, women are much better tasters. Yeah. <laughs> women are more, I, they just are. I'm sorry, they just are great tasters. And, and it's not even a matter when we talk about being a great taster because I've, I've tasted with great, of course, men and women. And um, so it's, it's having a memory for what you've tasted. That's it. Um, yeah, having, fact is memory. Right. Having a memory, oh, I tasted this when I tasted it here. Yes. I have that sort of memory. Um, and then again, being able to translate that into words. So, you know, you don't, we have a, a goofy language of wine, but, you know, everybody has a language. Insurance has a language. Everything has a language to put it into words. I just try to use different words than the wine language a lot of times so that so that we can open up the world of wine um, to everybody. And, you know, and, and so I think when I wrote it with the question, that, and it's evened out over the years, because I wrote it about 14 years ago. Yeah. Um, but it was such a hit. With you the know, men, men with, and I, women. I would get a lot more stat questions. I, I, you know, who won the game? What score did it get? What's the Oak regime? What's that? Even though they, a lot of times people didn't care about what the Oak regime was. It was just a question. Yes. Um, and so, so it was just, you know, I thought it was interesting. No right or wrong, no, nothing bad or good about either one of them, but that's the reason that I focused the book on targeting females. And I think, you know, it's, um, hopefully we'll get to the point where we don't have to talk anymore about, about females, about males, about, but you know, um, we have to well, celebrate. Very important I mean, too. We celebrate all these beautiful, these beautiful women that have really push the wine business into a, a whole different... Well, and health. you as a leader, uh, you know, 14 years ago and, and many years before that, have influenced many women in the wine world. And when you look at the growth of the master of wine, as an example, the growth of fabulous writers and personalities like you, not exactly like you because there's only They're one... Different, right? <laughs> Leslie Zwarko, but it's exciting to see because, you know, for me, born in the wine world, my mother was a big force as a wine taster. Oh, yes. And I believe you've met her as well. I did. I met her. My sister, for sure. But mm -hmm. there was not a lot of women at the time. So yeah. have you seen an enormous growth of ladies in the wine world? And you think I, it's going to get I more have. Better? When I started, I was uh, younger. <laughs> but I would show up, and I was working for the New York Times company, Internet, right? People are going, Internet? And, you know, who are you? Um, and so I think over the years, it is so rewarding to see the growth yes. and to see that you are um, a mentor for other people, that, that I've inspired them. When I hear, you know, younger women getting into the business saying, I, I just, I, I, you've inspired me so much, that, that makes me tear up, you know, it's, it's such a rewarding thing um, to know that it, you're just working hard to, um, to create a career and that that in some way can inspire people. So you advise uh, people in general, passion and you know, talent and that cross path to mm -hmm. really follow your future path. What I would, would you say, advise I, would say I get paid to drink so you can do anything you want, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you make jewelry you can, and nowadays more than any, People can find a career that they want, create it remotely, do what they want. There's, there's a niche and there's a place. The number one thing you have to do is work hard. That's it. Well, talking about that, you did on your second book. I did. So my second book was called um, The Simple and Savvy Wine Guide. Yes. And, um, and yes, you, I think you and I know Gina's Wines are in both these books. Thank um, you. And it was, it's more of a guide to, you know, finding wines Again, you know, if you like this, try this sort of uh, feeling yeah. to it. And, you know, the places to look and, and what to look for and great producers. So, you know, I've been trying for years to finish another book or two. And That's I haven't great. found you the time. More. I haven't found the time. So we'll see. <laughs> well, you work closely as well with O Magazine and Oprah. I've done, I've done I did, um, I did, uh, 
yes, events. I do, I do a lot of speaking, obviously not now, but um, virtual speaking. But, um, you know, traveling the country and the world, speaking at events and doing education and hosting soirees and, and yeah. dinners and had the great pleasure a number of years ago to, to be on stage with, uh, with Oprah's chef, Art Smith, and uh, getting, getting to meet the, the beautiful woman herself, Miss Oprah. Um, and, uh, you know, over the years, I've had a chance to be on the Today Show. You for know, sure. I've been a regular on the Today Show for for years with my buddy Ray Isle too. Of course, who we love and, and you kind well, of- I know you had Ray on the show. One day. Do yeah. you remember when we were on together with our barrel to barrel concept? That was yes. a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. So Leslie, you need to show everybody how we open a great bottle of bubbles. Okay, well I don't I have, you... I didn't have my saber with me. I don't have well, my saber, could... I have my own Laio saber. I don't, I left it. <laughs> we'll send you another one, Leslie. Right. You always need a saber in every drawer. I know. Woo! Woo in your honor, look at there that. There we go. Now we're, we're we drinking talk, something Leslie. bubbly and red. Well, That's you know right. that I so, you know that I do have a tattoo of rosé. Um, I'm not going to say champagne, rosé sparkling wine. <laughs> Clément de Bourgogne on my leg. Uh, I know, but I, I forgot where is it. Do you want to show it? It's Oh, no, that would be not pretty because it's on the bottom of my calf. So I'd have to be stepping up on my desk to do that. But I'll, I'll you know. We'll well, you could go picture. reverse, like at the French Coco in Paris. <laughs> but you you know a lot about red sparkling wine. I love it. We thought it would be so fun to get you to describe it and talk about it because not many people are very accustomed to it. And this was a big innovation with Waddle Creek to try to really push the envelope and introduce to the world something so different, unique, and very charming on the palate. I took a little sip of this. I have to admit I cheated and took a little sip when I was opening it and pouring it before we started. And I adore this wine. Let me tell you, I'm a fan of Lambruscos. I'm a fan of uh, Bracchetta di Acqui from, from Northern Italy. I'm a fan of, you know, there are red sparkling wines, sparkling Shiraz from Australia. Um, yeah, good I have, <laughs> I, I've got lots of stories about being in Australia drinking sparkling Shiraz. Um, but, you know, so when you talk about red sparkling wine, it, there is a history of red sparkling wine around the world. And so, so I, I tasted this and I thought, oh, it's like wild strawberries, like those little tiny wild strawberries, right? That, yes. that you just take a bite of, you smell just that hint of herbaceousness to it and that sweet, sweet red berry um, component. You get a little almost chocolatey kind of cocoa nose to it, but not heavy, you know, just a whisper of it. And um, it just makes you want to drink it, right? You smell this and you go, oh, I want to put that in my mouth now. Mm. And then, you know, the remarkable thing, it dances on your tongue, mm. right? This is not a heavy, powerful, sparkling Shiraz can be very overwhelming and highly alcoholic and powerful. This has lightness and brightness and freshness to it. Thank it, you so much. It makes me jump in my chair here. Let's dance. Let's dance. Well, I, I want everybody to pay attention and to listen again to Leslie's description because she made it so easy for us to understand the garden, the orchard, mm -hmm. the fruit, the plants, and then the emotion. Right. So Leslie, a message for people to dive into the world of tasting wine in a great way like you've done. Any advice? Because I will never forget Leslie asked me to host a tasting with her in San Francisco with a group of bankers and insurance people. And it was one of the most amazing moments. We had great fun, didn't and, we? And there's maybe bankers, of course, and insurance people listening to us. Take no offense, everybody was in a suit, looked very dark. The market was down and she lighted them up in a 90 minute presentation and they were dancing on the table after it. <laughs> How did you I do think that? That was the tequila, but don't, I mean, we won't say anything about that. I think that might've been the tequila afterwards. But you I know. think you really enlightened them to, that helped too, but you enlightened them to look at wine in a different way. So 
Would you like but to share with wine, us how you do we this? We can learn everything we want about wine. You will never, you know, you, and you talk to, you know, people like Doug Frost, a master of wine, master sommelier, a, an amazing human. And he, he knows more about wine that, you know, he'll forget more about wine than we'll ever know. And he's always learning. We're always learning about it every day. So you don't have to know everything. The most important thing is to taste, 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 and figure out what you like and why, right? Our job is to help people figure out why. Okay, so you don't like it. Cool, that's great. Is it because it's too sweet, maybe? Or is it because it's too tart? Or let's try to figure out why, and then I can help direct you to finding other wines you like, right? That's there's never any wrong advice. there's never any wrong answer there's only right answers it's just finding what's right for each individual and so i always find that you can take all that knowledge and you can still make wine fun you can make it look you know i hope that my personality is bubbly enough like this wine to to make people fall in love with wine and and have a great time i don't care if you're a a novice or, you know, an, an absolute expert. It still should be fun. And you keep it fun, you make it fun and so entertaining. So Leslie, yes. you've given us some great advice so far. What inspires this beautiful lady, Lesbis Brackle? Um, what inspires me is to get up and um, be a good human every day. So mm -hmm. I think um, my family, my friends, my career, I have a, um, an appreciation, a sense of gratitude, I think, that yeah. you have to cultivate gratitude and you have to choose it, right? Gratitude is a choice. And so you have to wake up and say, don't worry about what you don't have. Don't worry about where you aren't. Worry mm -hmm. about where you are and how you can make the best of it. And, um, and I, I got that way. I think that's just my natural personality. My nickname as a kid was Sunshine. So yes. um, I, I, I could see that so much. Inherent in that. But I'll tell you, um, my, I grew up in sort of a charmed little, my father was an airline pilot, five kids in the Midwest, traveled, had a wonderful uh, upbringing. And when I was 12 years old, um, my dad died. He was flying mm -hmm. a plane and died. Mm -hmm. So one day you're this carefree kid. The next day, your life has changed. Yes. So I've always had that since a young age of saying, I appreciate what I have today. And that's what motivates and inspires me is to just to take a moment and appreciate that. And that's what I wish to, to share with everybody is to say, you know, beautiful, make it a good day. I mean, beautiful advice. <laughs> I love it. Make it a good day, people. You have no excuse. <laughs> so on that note, tell us about your show. PBS on PBS Cougar. Oh, <laughs> that I did a really fun thing years ago for um, for TBS, right? When they'd had Cougar Town with with uh, Courtney, what was her name? Oh God, um, I didn't appear on the show, but I did wine picks for the show, and it was really it was really fun uh, to be able to pair episodes of Cougar Town with different wines. So um, I've had quite a few you know television adventures. I've logged a lot of hours on television. Um, and Check, Please is the show that I'm known in the Bay Area for on PBS, yeah. on KQED. Love and um, that's been, I've won three Emmy Awards for that and a James Beard Award. And, so well uh, deserved. Thank you. And it's a restaurant review show, but from a, a regular person's perspective with three people sitting around a table chatting. And, um, and so we've just completed our 15th season. Who knows wow. where the restaurant world is right now? Um, we that's can talk amazing. about that, but you know. Um, but I, that's certainly uh, a joyous and wonderful thing to have, have been the host of Check Please for that long. Yes. So, Leslie, another advice maybe for people that I've always admired in you, and I never ask you about your children, and I discovered... Oh, I'm afraid now. <laughs> I'm like, I've never asked you. <laughs> well, because I saw you at this amazing personality, met you, so dynamic, you create your own company, Thirsty Girl. You do all those amazing things. And I never thought you could want to have a husband. And because it's not easy when every man is obviously and oh, woman for you. That's not true. Which is, I've witnessed no. that many times in your no, presence. No, not true, not true. And you have a 23-year-old daughter and an 18-year-old boy. How and is it? My kids how is it to be a mother as well and to do all that? Because so many people have a, a challenge, obviously, into multitasking and, and, and 
you know, I, as a priority? I grew up in a big family. My mother, as I mentioned, my father passed away early. So my mother raised all of us, never remarried. Yeah. This was a super strong role model and woman. Uh, I grew up traveling on a plane. And so my kids have always traveled. They've always, I have a, a wonderful husband who's, you know, who's um, his, his, he, he he just he says I don't need to be in the spotlight. You you know you you've got you've got plenty. I don't need to be in the spotlight. And so um, you know I've always taken that we've always taken the kids with us places. We've mm. always said you can do anything you want. Our daughter's an artist and a graphic designer, and um, and our son is a, a big sports guy. And so I I think our kids ha have a really great perspective on life. And I've been lucky because my mom lives nearby. Yes. So. Um, so my kids have been raised with their grandmother and that's and that's helped a lot. I couldn't have done my traveling job without that, I'll tell you. So well, congratulations for all that. How does it feel actually for a husband to have such a powerful woman? Oh, I think he's he's such a powerful guy anyway, but just in a quieter way. Yeah. <laughs> that he just rolls his eyes. He's like <laughs> well, I've had the pleasure to meet him, as you know, a few times, and, and he's Well, wonderful. and you know, you've got a wonderful, powerful, amazing, talented wife, right? Um, you know, for me, I love it, and I love, I, as you know, of course, we've had this discussion so many times together to see very powerful women. I, I thrive by being surrounded with women <laughs> with energy, with power, with determination, with skills. And ladies like you who just say, let's do it. And right, there's no, there's no substitute. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. It, there's no substitute for hard work, focus, and preparation. You know? And how did you get that sense of entrepreneurship, do you think? And how, think how did I, you convert I was to that, success? I, I was raised that way that you can do anything you want and, um, yeah. and you put your mind to it. And I'm a little bit more for free form, I think, than, than other people. So I, I, never, I never really liked the idea of working for a big company or, yes. you know, um, I like making my own schedule. I like, I like, I'm, I'll work at midnight, two o'clock in the morning, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I, when my son was little, son strapped to my chest, writing things, you know, doing. So it's, for me, I'm very self-motivated. And I think that that allows me um, to, you know, to succeed in my way, in, in a way that, that might not make other people happy, but, you know, there are risks and rewards to everything. But at the end of the day, you know, it's like the Frank song, doing it my way. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I serve another wine. And I've got my glass back here. What, what, is, what is balance to you, Leslie? Because you kind of touch on it, obviously, very well. But describe it, because I have, honestly, true admiration for you. I know your success, TV, books, author, producer, personality in wine, a judge, a mother, an athlete, and all of that. What is balance to you, and how do you succeed in that balance, and what advice do you have? Because balance is what everybody's trying to really you manage. You know, I, I'm... I'm not so great at it sometimes. Sometimes I'm, I'm too hard of a worker and, you know, other things slip down and you try to just monitor yourself and you try to have those people in your life be your counterweights, you know, and, and um, when things get out of balance, you try to reel it back in and get in balance. And, and so I think in life, it's always a constant battle to find mm -hmm. balance and you're never going to have it all the time. I mean, you know, you, you, it's it's a treasure when you find it and you try to keep it you know going but your life would be like that if it was constantly in balance come on do a little bit of this get a little up and down you know you love going up and down you gotta have it's a little passion you gotta have a little excitement on the ride man you gotta go like this it's got to be a little bit of a roller coaster you know for life to be exciting but i think that's what you find in wine you know tying yeah. it back into wine is when people say to me what is one word as you can tell, it's hard for me to do that. But what is one word that makes a great wine? And the, the answer is balance. Yes. I don't care if it's an ethereal 7% Mosul Riesling that, that, you know, that, that feels like, you know, as I said in my first book, you're putting on a spring dress, or if it's a heavy, intense, rich, Garnacha-based wine from Priorat in Spain, right? Speaking yes. of getting to Grenache. If they're in balance, meaning all the parts work together, 
that, you know, it's like a house, right? A beautiful house that has a foundation and walls and a roof. All of that has to work together. The tannins, the oak, the fruit, the, yes. the acid, all of that has to work together to create balance so that the wine is seamless. And that's what makes a great wine, a seamless, balanced wine. Well said. Magnificently said. So let's, try, let's taste the balance. Okay. So I so we're having a wine that is wine. one of your favorite grape varieties. So I'm going to let you speak I do. about it. I do. When I saw this Wattle Creek um, Grenache, I went, yay, Grenache. Not enough people do Grenache. I love Grenache. And um, I actually, in my first book, I, des I described Grenache, uh, Grenache as uh, the Gérard Depardieu of wine. <laughs> Before we found out a lot more about Gerard, but um, but you know, oh, kind of actor. brawny, kind of brawny and big, but still with this incredible style and this incredible, you know, funniness and humor and um, and that's really to me. I do a lot of education for the wines from Spain and yeah. Arnacha, um, which is a great great variety from originated in Spain, uh, yes. and you know the northeastern portion of Spain, Priorat, um, etc. And kind of you know. And then you've got it in the south of France and, and um, you know, in Australia, amazing old vine Grenache yep. in Australia. And so in California, I think, you know, you have a handful of producers that are doing great Grenache because it can have high alcohol and power, mm -hmm. but you can still see the sheer, you know, you can still see your hand through a great Grenache. You can still get that sun-baked quality of, you know, think of, Chateau de de Pop or something, right? Or you think right. of the South of France. You can still get this sun-baked quality to it, but it still has to have this almost raspberry confiture, this this beautiful little sweet, um, fruity freshness to make it a great Grenache. God, isn't she amazing how she talks <laughs> about wine? Dear friend, send her millions of hearts. <laughs> you know we selected this Millions of hearts. Millions of hearts. We know so I, 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 you know, I think it's a super underappreciated grape, and I'm so thrilled that that you're making a Sonoma County Grenache. I'm looking right here at the bottle at the Wattle Creek yeah. bottle. Great. Well, and it's made by a woman as well, Katie Carter, who's mm. a wonderful, <laughs> talented winemaker who has been with us for over 12 years now, and is born here and really understands very well those grape varieties. Mm. So we're thrilled from a woman to another woman to the world of women. To the, to the world of women. And I'll tell you, again, I'm looking through this and it's got this beautiful garnet hue to it. And it's just, it's sheer, right? You can, I call it sort of sheer pantyhose looking through it, you know, but still- I'm looking, I'm looking, sheer yeah, pantyhose. right, look underneath this intensity of color. <laughs> I'm afraid that Dylan is gonna look- <laughs> Look underneath, look at that. And I wanna have, you know, I wanna have, here's what I think would be amazing with it. Pork loin. Take yes. a pork loin wrapped in um, bacon, get the un, you know the beautiful kind of smoked bacon, sear it, cook it a little bit, get the pork loin tender, do some mushrooms, and then take some either raspberry jam or apricot preserves and do a little glaze on top with that. I'm praying. When am I coming for dinner? I'll, I'll tell you. The wine. I'm coming to you. I'll cook it. Well, maybe we should do a show together when you're cooking yeah, I'll and cook. we're talking wine. <laughs> I mean, that, that would be gorgeous with this because it has the heaviness to kind of take on the smokiness of the bacon and the fattiness, right? But then it has this, this little sweet, you know, kick, <clears throat> if you will, on the finish that makes you go, oh, I want something just a little jammy and sweet with that. Now, you described it so well. And again, friends, this is all about balance. And mm. what did Leslie do? Talk about the balance of wine and food together and doing the pairing where one plus one equals three. One plus one. There's never any wrong answer to wine and food pairing. Or, you know, as Alder Yarrow says, there's not, no such thing as wine and food pairing. Um, there isn't a wrong answer. It's what you like and drink what you like and eat what you like, right? That's um, right. But, but when you get things that really speak to you, you do get the one plus one equals three. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Yeah. So Leslie, few more personal questions. Sure. What is your passion? Well, I mean, I think I've, I think I've, um, sort Besides of the wine, you it. exuded I've... amazingly well on wine and food and, and such a public phenomenal personality. That I you think are. I've been describing it in the sense that everything I do is laced with this, um, is, 
is laced with this desire to to engage people yes to, to make them smile i was actually on a call today uh, about some business thing and the woman i was talking to said i just have to tell you leslie every time i see you on your you know instagram lives or doing whatever or tv you make me smile Yes. And that is the best compliment I can get is, you know, we all need a little levity, a little smile in our life. You, 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 you know, I once had a, a, a woman who was, you know, kind of this facialist. She was doing a facial on me and she said, darling, you have wrinkles on your eyes. You smile too much. <laughs> and I said, I'd rather have wrinkles and smile too much than not smile enough, you know? So, so I think, um, I, I, my passion is that I can take that smile and impart a little bit of humor, a little bit of joy, a little bit of um, knowledge or, or levity to somebody's day, right? And you instill a joie de vivre in the true French sense and indeed always make a smile. Right. Each right. right. Now, right. what is Leslie Zbracco's dream that she's never shared, that she maybe not yet have accomplished? Um, wow. That's the two books that you're writing right now. That's a dream, which is I'm, a I'm reality. Trying to, I'm trying to think of something. I need to finish my other books, not necessarily a dream. Um, you know, I, I want to do something like hike Mount Kilimanjaro oh, or something. I want to do something, something very that, physical and spiritual. Right. I want to do something that I'm a hiker. Um, <laughs> Uh, I like, I love to bike. I love to, you know, um, my husband and I do a lot of physical activity, but you know, something like well, that we hope a still challenge, still do. where it's a challenge. Um, <sighs> then I think that that maybe is. Did I say that? <laughs> well, I can't, I can't, uh, I, now that I've said it actually out loud, now that means I have to do something about it is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a great dream to do this. Now I have to go and do something like look at, you know, hiking Mount Kilimanjaro or something. Uh, so Leslie, you've been amazing. I want to thank you so much, not only for your great time, but uh, the 20 years of friendship we've had and all the great things we've done and the, the amazing inspiration you are, not only for ladies and men at the same time. So younger people as well, because you've inspired hundreds. I've offered, you know, your book to a few hundred people when you came out with it and they still have it in the library and they still read it occasionally. So you are with people at all time and remind everyone as I'd like you to do a closing inspirational statement. As we say goodbye, sadly, uh, make sure you mention uh, where everybody can follow you and we will indicate it, of course, and send everybody uh, a note so they can follow you at all time, but tell us. Well, I'll do, the, I'll, do the, I'll do the hard sell first and then I'll do the, the, the short wrap up, right? Of course. Um, you know, I would love it if people watched my show on PBS called 100 Days, Drinks, Dishes and Destinations. And if that's too much of a mouthful, simply put in Leslie Sabraco 100 Days and the website will pop up. And, and you'll see uh, in Google and you'll see me and the website. You can watch all the episodes there, including the episode with you, Sean Shaw. Thank you. And, um, and um, you know, check out the things I'm doing. I do an Instagram Live on Wednesdays and, and uh, Facebook Live. And, you know, you can follow me on social media, just at Leslie Sabraco. And in the meantime, choose gratitude every day. It's a, it, you have to choose it. And say thankful, you know, be thankful at the end of every day for the things that you have. And um, stay safe and sip on. I love it. <laughs> so, Leslie, to your passion and your charisma, your personality, your inspirational, contagious style, I want to say we love you. And we wish you a fabulous continued summer. And we cannot wait to celebrate together very soon and, and to have a great time and to continue to dream. I love it. And I'm clinking and toasting to you and the whole family. And how am, I'm going to put these down, though, because I thought we were singing. We are. Mm -hmm. Un, deux, trois. Ah. La, 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 la,
la 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 la